in Europe. Um, and it, the idea really intrigued me. It, it, it is in keeping with my, my values. Uh, I've been an, an alderman in Chicago for 23 years. Now, people ask me, don't you have, you don't have term limits? And I said, of course we do. We call them elections. Um, uh, but I've had the privilege of serving 23 years. And throughout that time, I've been very much uh, about community empowerment. We have all sorts of community advisory councils and citizen participation. Um, but this takes the next step further. As you can tell, it gives people not only a voice, not only opportunity to express their opinion in the hopes that maybe those of us in power will listen to them and maybe we won't, uh, it gives them real power. Real power to decide how to spend a portion of their tax out. That's what makes it so transformative. Um, each each uh, council member in Chicago gets, uh, and Chicago's divided up in 50 wards, each ward is roughly uh, 57,000 in population. That 60,000 figure was before the 2010 census. Chicago lost some folks. We're about, uh, see about 2.6 million now, 2.6 million. Uh, so we each have about 57,000 residents. Each of us is given $1.3 million a year to spend on, at our discretion on capital projects. In other words, uh, infrastructure. Streets, alleys, sidewalks, new street lights, improvements to public buildings, uh, and the like. And that, of course, is opposed to uh, the operating budget, which goes to pay for salaries and, and provide services um, uh, that is uh, a budget that's voted on by the city council, but in this particular case, each individual alderman gets 1.3 million. Uh, and for the first 15 years that, you know, that, that this program started in 1994, when I was uh, an alderman three years, and for the next 15 years, I made the decision myself. Now I listened to people. We looked at. Uh, constituent service requests that came in our office and tried to address them. Um, I drove around the neighborhood one afternoon and would survey all the streets and, and sidewalks and make a uh, subjective determination of what needed to be, be done. But also, ultimately, it was my decision, and a decision that would take one day uh, now takes me an entire year because we had this process. Um, uh, uh, I was introduced to uh, um, Jimmy's boss, Josh Lerner, uh, through a mutual friend. Uh, he was trying to bring participatory budgeting to the United States. He had just started a participatory budgeting project, just was forming it as an not for profit organization, and was looking for a guinea pig. And he looked far and wide and came across an alderman from Chicago who thought, hey, pretty neat idea. I think I'm going to try it. Not only is it in keeping with my values, but it sounds like it's going to be a lot of fun. And so I gathered about uh, 70 community leaders, people representing all the different organizations and constituencies in my community, brought them together, said, I'd like to try to do this. I explained what participatory budgeting was, brought Josh Lerner in and his partner to explain what it was all about. We talked about my discretionary fund, what we could spend the money on, and then I said, this is only going to work if not only I, if we have community buy-in. And the only reason, the only way you're going to get that is if people really feel that this isn't some process that was created by Joe Moore and by the city of Chicago, that this is something they created. So with the help and guidance of Josh and the participatory budgeting project and the support of my office over the next several months, back in 2009, uh, these community leaders fashioned this process. And the process is simply uh, this. It's a four, four, four or five step process, starting with neighborhood meetings throughout different parts of my community where we bring people together, tell them about participatory budgeting, tell them about what this uh, discretionary fund I have, and then they break out in groups and begin to brainstorm about how they can spend the money. And then we bring them all together, they share their ideas, and then before they go, we ask them to help out. We ask them to step forward and self-select themselves as community representatives, representatives of their neighborhood who would work with my office over the next four or five months in step two of the process to develop project proposals. 
based on the products, the brainstorming sessions, right, based on uh, constituent requests I get in my office, based on their own ideas of what would be great for the community. And so they divide up the subject matters committees, and throughout the course of the winter, they meet, they deliberate, they investigate, they research, they meet with city officials, uh, and as a result, and the culmination of that process, they come up with some ideas that they think could be put on an election ballot for everyone in the board to vote on. And they come back for, some, for a couple of meetings called Project Expos, where they present their ideas to the community, get some fine feedback. Based on that feedback, they make kick some product proposed projects to the curb, others will refine, then they finalize them, put them on election ballot, and then we have an election in late April, early May in my neighborhood, where everyone is invited to come out to vote. Not everyone. Uh, not just registered voters, not just people who are US citizens, but everybody. Anybody who is age 16 years of age or older, uh, who can demonstrate that they reside in 49 Ford, show some sort of identification, a, a, an ID, a, a, a lease, a utility bill, something that establishes that they live within the 49th Ward of Chicago, they vote. They're given, um, depending on the election, anywhere from four to seven votes that they can cast from a list of projects. The projects with the most votes up to the point where we spend the million dollars, I agree to submit to the city for implementation. And then we um, go through a process of making sure these projects are implemented, we keep everyone informed, and then the process starts again the following fall. We've done it for five years now. We just finished our first uh, first vote. Uh, every election, we're getting more and more people participating, and the diversity of that participation is remarkable. We make a lot of effort to make sure that those who come out to vote aren't just the usual suspects, aren't the people that you just see coming out to vote in local elections, but we go out to the neighborhoods. And so our participation is, is become very closely reflective of the diversity in my community and much more reflective of the diversity of the community than the electorate that comes out for local elections and quite frankly more uh, representative of the community than the electorate that comes out for the general election when, you know, when the president is running. Uh, we're very proud of that and we are uh, um, absolutely committed to not only continuing the process of my work but it's spread it throughout the city of Chicago. I've been able to convince our mayor to create a position within, within the city of Chicago budget office, uh, a position that uh, a staff person who assists myself and other aldermen who are interested and eager to do participatory budgeting with their discretionary funds. And of course, we've taken the message to New York, to Vallejo, uh, to St. Louis, to San Francisco, uh, Richmond, Virginia, I understand, has just signed on. And now, hopefully, with your help uh, and your ability to convince your city council here in San Diego, California. So, why? Here's, here's my favorite slide of the entire PowerPoint presentation. You know, I thought I had my ears to the ground. I thought I knew what people wanted. And so, um, you know, it, face my own beliefs in making decisions on how I should spend my discretionary fund, which is really the people's discretionary fund. It's, it's my constituents' tax dollars that work here. This represents, that pie chart represents the 2009 um, uh, allocation of money in my community, the last year that I was the one that made the decisions. As you can see, I devoted a lot to three, jump the gun. I devoted a lot to street resurfacing, um, and then you can see uh, lesser amounts to like traditional projects. What happened in 2010 when we turned the power over to the people? Now I can bring up. Look at how different it is. When the people were given power to make the decision, uh, they reached a different conclusion than I did. And I think that summarizes why this is important. Because, um, um, you know, in a representative democracy, you know, obviously, uh, you know, we can't have everyone making every decision. Uh, people just don't have the time to know about everything. But um, there are important things that, that 
there are more differences we can make in the way that we make decisions today. Uh, through participatory budgeting, we educate people, we get them engaged, we get them involved in the civic affairs of our, uh, of, of, of our city and my ward, and as a result, we come up with um, proposals and projects and spending decisions that are much more reflective of what people actually want than what we as elected officials think they want. So thanks very much for having me. I'm going to turn this microphone back over to Jenny, but I really do hope that yours is inspired as I have been uh, at becoming a part of a transformative process that will hopefully restore public trust in government and make government much more reflective of the will of people. So I'm actually going to turn it over to Lynette Guzman, who, again, as Hammer said, is a former budget delegate and now facilitator of the Youth Committee in Vallejo. And you're right, it's much better down here. <laughs> so um, can you guys hear me fine? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So um, I don't really get any slides because I'm talking about my personal experience, so it only makes sense that everything is going to be verbal of what I've been through through the process. So I got involved in the process when I was 16 in Vallejo. My dad took me to one of these meetings, and I thought, I'm, I'm not going to want to be here. It's going to be really boring. But I was actually really interested right from the start. And I became a budget delegate, and I was on the Parks and Recs Committee. And basically, exactly what the alderman said, we went through every single process. And you know, it took a lot of time, but from somebody from my age and my perspective, I didn't know a single thing about the city in general. So we went through the process starting with just a simple idea of let's talk park improvements. And we had to go out in the city, talk to the city council members, we had to go and talk to the city agencies to see would you guys give us money, where are we going to get the money from, all those type of things. And then actually when we went through all the different steps, then we actually came up with a number, a figure that we would have for the park improvement. And then we went up to these project expos. Essentially, that's like a project, like a science fair. So everybody would come out and look at our project. And of course, we would, we would talk about our project and say, oh, for this one. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, it was a really great experience. And from there, then it, the project was able to go on the ballot. And everybody was, the energy was incredible. Everybody was extremely excited to do that. My vote to make a difference. That is something completely different, and especially coming from the layout. We were in bankruptcy, so it was like really difficult for us to get back on our feet. But having the process was like a great experience for them to have it. And like Jenny said, I'm a facilitator now for the youth committee. So I started off doing the actual budget delegate where somebody else was telling me how to guide me through the process. But now I'm actually guiding other youth to do the same thing that I did last year. And they're just as excited as the youth was last year. So it's an extremely great process for them to have it. And I just think that it personally should come to San Diego because you saw the difference in the energy that it brought to people. And it might be through a single district or it might start citywide, who knows. But of course, that's up to you guys to decide. And that's what we're here presenting to you tonight. So hopefully with every consideration through the great speeches that everybody had, then obviously I would hope you guys would look for more information. So now I'm going to hand it over to Paula Martinez so she can talk more about it. So, yes, as she said, I'm Paula Martinez and I'm the new board manager at ACE San Diego. ACE is a nonprofit organization um, of statewide, and we are a multi issue organization. And the way that we organize is very similar to the way that people. Uh, organizers. So we go into the neighborhoods, we door knock, and we ask people what their issues are. And based on those issues, our members can decide what to organize around. So, for example, in District 4, where there's a huge need for infrastructure, there's a sidewalk, very little lighting, um, our, new, our members start organizing around that. And so, one thing, I'll give you an example of one of the projects that we've been working on. We have a uh, campaign, it's Clean and Safe Market campaign. So we've been organizing to make sure that we have proper lighting, that we have the stop signs that we need, 
that we have, traffic signs that we need, and most importantly, there's South my Cemetery that leads right into the neighborhood. And so this road is, has no sidewalk and it's very unsafe. Um, we've had cars hit each other, we've had um, cars hit other kids, and so it's incredibly dangerous and our members really wanted to organize around this. And so we've been working with our health members to try and get this going. And unfortunately, after a year and a half of organizing, we still haven't got our sidewalk. And it, it is a CIP project now, and we know that it takes a really long time to get projects up and running. But there's been members in our community, or in the community that we're organizing, that have been wanting the sidewalk for as long as we've lived there, over four over 40 years, and they remember the same issue, right? And so there's some person who's been waiting a really long time, and nothing has happened. And so at AIDS, we believe that if we have PV or a project that's implemented like this, we would be able to not only organize, but actually see results. And I think that that's what our members are really excited about, and we're really excited about, and I'm really excited about, that we put in all this work and we're organizing and we're doing everything that we can and we actually see results at the end of the day. And so what this does is it creates more participation. So not too long ago we won our first victory. We won our first stop sign on our campaign. And we have the first super motivated to continue on. And now we're waiting for the sidewalk to be you know, built so we don't have the funding for it. And although our council member has been really excited to try and get this going because she understands that there's a huge need, we're sort of still waiting. And so we think and we know that if we continue to go down this road, nobody's ever going to do anything and we're never going to want to really participate. But if we go down the road where we have the ability to make decisions, and actually have the funding to create these results in our community, everything will be so much better. In Vallejo has happened, in Chicago has happened, so why can't it happen here? Um, and also, when we ourselves are the ones participating, we educate ourselves, so our members are two or three times more, um, have the ability or have the, um, the not necessarily the capacity, but the willingness to go out and vote and to go out and really be part of their community beyond just what they were doing before, which was essentially nothing, right? And so um, that's what we're really excited about, and I hope that we can implement this in our city, and I hope that it'll work out. So, thank you. Thank you. 